Okay, this is a brief summary of what's been going on in my life. Um, and I want to sum this up. This has to do with gang stalking in San Diego. Now, okay, when I was three years old, 1973, my sister was five years old. We were in a park playing by ourselves. That's, that was common back then. This is, there's a police report to prove this. Seven older kids took us down into the canyon on Linda Vista. They peed on us. They did a horror. They got us naked. They did a whole bunch of horrible stuff. Sexual. They beat us with, uh, you know, sticks with thorns on them. I was three years old. I was a three-year-old little kid. My sister was four and a half, five years old. They said, if you tell, we're going to burn your apartment down. It's like, hi, okay, we got, we got away. They went to go eat dinner. We ran out of the canyon. We got away after hours of torture. We got home, told our mom. She called the police. We saw a therapist. The therapist said, your kids need to forgive these perps. So they need to come over to your house under supervision and play with your kids. This is what was going on in 1970. This is what was going on in 1973. I'm sorry, 75. No, sorry, 1974. 1974, 73, around there. So the kids came over. They had the rest of our clothes folded up. It was so creepy. They were so fake. Remember, they said they were going to burn our place down, right? They played with us for an hour or whatever. They went home. A few nights later, the dumpster next to our bedroom window mysteriously caught on fire. So time goes by, weird stuff goes on, you know, you're a kid, weird stuff, whatever, but when I was 10 years old, I was home alone, eating a bowl of cereal, phone rang, answered the phone, there's a man, this is, these are all true accounts, this, this is the pieces of the puzzle I put together that painted the picture of what was going on in my life. Ten years old, I'm home alone, I'm eating a bowl of cereal, the phone rings. I live in Lemon Grove at the time. Mom was gone at my grandma's house. Phone rang, I answer it. This man goes, is this Tony? And I go, hello? And he's like, Tony, I know you're alone. I'm watching you, and I'll be watching you the rest of your life. This is a true story. This is what this guy told me. So I'm, I'm like, I'm creeped out now. I'm, I'm here alone, and I'm thinking, like, this guy is, this is creepy. You know what I mean? I'm scared. My mom comes home, I tell her, you know, it's just a prank call, whatever. She's worried, but it's just like a prank call to her. Even though I knew my name, she's probably thinking ex-boyfriend or cousin or I mean, Jesse, Tommy, just whatever. But, um, so time goes on. Now I'm 15 years old, and I'm up at, what, 11 o'clock at night watching Tales from the Dark Side? And I'm eating, <laughs> again, I think a bowl of cereal. And I look, you know how you feel like someone's watching you? I feel like this pressure on the left side of my face. So I feel like someone's watching me. So I turn around and look. And there's a white man. I live in the ghetto. It's all blacks and Mexicans. There's a white man sitting in our window looking at me. Just staring at me. And I was like creeped out. So I ran to tell my mom. Anyways, by the time he was already gone, that was uh, I was 15. That was 1985. Then in '87, me and my girlfriend we had a baby. We got together young. I was, I was 17. She was 15, and we moved in across the street. And this guy had like this shelf up against our bedroom window all kinds of stuff on it, just like tons of stuff on it. Me and her were getting ready to go to bed and we heard like someone like moving the shelf around, like just slowly moving stuff around. We, we sat there all night like listening to this, like it was so creepy. There was no phone in the house, there was no cell phones back then. There was no way for us to call out for help, help you know. Next morning we go out there, someone took everything off the shelf 
and move the shelf away from the window. True story. Now we move down the street a few months later in a duplex. Me, me and my girlfriend and my, my son. My son was about three months old, four months old. I'm in the bedroom. There's two bedrooms. I'm in his bedroom, my son's bedroom. You know, I have brand new carpet, brand new paint. I'm, you know, I'm 17. I'm excited because it's like here, here we are on our own. You know, my own apartment. I'm just like a kid, but it was amazing. It felt, it felt amazing. I can smell the paint on the walls, the carpet, the carpet smell, brand new carpet. I'm putting his crib together. It's around 10:30 at night, 11 o'clock at night. You know, I'm getting ready to go to bed. But I'm trying to get his crib together first. She comes walking in the room. Tony, Tony. I'm like, what? She's like, someone's in the window. Shh, come here. So I go. I follow her to our room. I look across the room. And my son's on the bed. Because he slept with us between me and her. And there in the window is a shadow of a huge guy. I'm like 140 pounds, 135 pounds. This guy's like 280 pounds. You know, it's big when you're a little, you know, a little guy. Shadow of a man. He's like a side profile of a man. And you can, and we sat there listening. You could hear him like messing with the window, but he was like trying to stay still. And and then you could hear like a little little tinkle sound, like tink. And then he stayed still, and then tink. And I grabbed a knife and I stood there waiting for him to try and come through. We had no phone, no cell phone. The front of the house, there's no windows, there's no peek hole, there's just no window. It's just a wall and a door. <clears throat> so I was, I was, that was the only way out. I was kind of afraid to get us out because it's nighttime and there might be more people out there waiting for us. We had to sit there or stand there and, and just take this. You know, we didn't know what else to do. If we yelled out, he could have came jumping through the window. He would have grabbed me and her within seconds. And I got to, you know, protect my son. So I, I didn't want to really get the guy in a rage because he would have, you know, I'm a little guy, tiny guy. Anyways, the next morning, he never came through, but the next morning we go out there and the screws were taken off the window thing. He was trying to come through the window. Now, when you start putting this together, you start seeing a pattern, right? Anyways, it goes on. So, this is getting creepy. I mean, this is just... There was a house on the hill, and we noticed they, they were standing in the window naked. And they're looking down at our place. They're standing in the window all night long, naked, looking down at our duplex. Well, it turns out that this is the same house, our landlord's house, the guy that rented us the duplex. I'm thinking now, he probably had like video cameras, he probably videotaped us and stuff, you know. <clears throat> we break up, 1990, I moved to, into the studio apartment where I'm at now. 1990, my aunt owns it. She was a teacher at the time, school teacher. Now she's a retired school principal, but she was a teacher. I move in here right away. As soon as I'm here, I, I go to work, I come back home, and my lights are always on, like someone's coming inside. Time progresses. In 1995, I meet this woman named Elizabeth. I won't tell you her last name yet, <laughs> unless I'm forced to. And she's a real beautiful Italian woman, has her own townhouse in East Lake. I'm 25, she's 35, she buys me all these clothes. Thousand dollars in clothes the first two weeks I'm with her. I'm with her for three years, but she's always trying to hurt me. And she always has cop friends. I don't really put this up together yet. Time goes by, you know, we break up in 99 or whatever. I'm attacked by a light demon. I pray out for Christ. You don't have to believe this, but this is, I'm just telling you a true, a true story right now. And if you, and if you get this, you're going to see what's going on. I pray to Christ. I cry out because I'm crying because this light demon thing's killing me. I cry out and all these orbs show up. They start circling the room and that light gets, the bright light that's hurting me is getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it's gone. Your room fills up with this amazing love. And it happened when I cried out for Christ. True story. True story. Well, about a year later, I, I end up meeting, meeting this woman, and we get married. She moves in. One morning, I hear this noise, and I wake up. And I see these two women in these condos over here by this gate next door to me. They're jumping up and down. And it sounds just, it just sounds like demonic. It just has like a weird sound, like somebody's walking through the yard. 
approaching you, it gets louder and louder, and then they start walking past you, then they walk away, and it gets, the sound gets lower and lower, like, like that. Well, I look out the window, I see these two girls jumping up and down, and they're looking, they, and I'm in the dark, and I'm looking at this little tiny slit of the window, and they look right over at me, and they're giggling, and they're pointing at me, and, and they're laughing at each other, and they start jumping up and down again. It looked, it looked robotic. It looked really weird. It didn't look right. It looked robotic. Well, that bothered me. I thought, this is really weird. You know, it's coming from the condos. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cut through a few things that happened. I mean, like I found stuff, moved, money missing, a whole bunch of other stuff I ain't talking about. I was missing 60 bucks, missing 40 bucks, missing 20 bucks. Missing, this is before she moved in. I'm missing money all the time. They were coming in here when I was asleep. I didn't know this. These are people in the condos next door. Neighbors, that way toward the Morley Field Park. I live in North Park in San Diego. Toward Morley Field Park and across the street. I'm on Louisiana Street. Now, about six months ago. Who is it? Hang on. So in November, I uploaded a video of my ex-girlfriend. It looks like she's shape-shifting into something. I get 10,000 views. A friend says, oh, that's a lot of views. That's really good. I said, no, it's not good because if she's a reptilian hybrid, I might be in danger now. So a week goes by. I get the 10,000 views. Another week goes by. I go to the emergency room for an asthma attack and the doctor gives me an IV that is making me sicker and sicker. It feels like I'm dying. I'm starting to like get real, you know, dizzy and nauseated. And I take the IV out, I go home, and I get better right away. Then a few weeks later at a red light, a man pulls up to my car, runs over to my car and tries to get inside my car. I'm starting to think, wow, they're trying to trying to kill me. That confirms to me that reptilian hybrids are real. There would be no danger unless I was onto something. So I'm praying, I'm being protected by God, and the Holy Spirit guides me to do research. And I start realizing that I, I don't know much. I know I'm being targeted and I know <clears throat> that reptilian hybrids are real then I find some strange material this is all happening like November 2016 then around January I find some strange material in my apartment I've been living here for 27 years I start, I start realizing there's this really weird material it's gone now it is like little rice and there's like these white balls that are like almost like putty these little black balls it was like four different things. That's what you'd be looking for. I, I remember the rice, the, the white balls, and the black balls. And, um, it's weird material. But, you know, I, I, I noticed it and I go, this is really weird. But I was also getting bit by something and I thought, okay, I told a friend I have bed bugs. She says, lay shipping tape around your bed, and if you have bed bugs, you catch them in the shipping tape. So I laid down some shipping tape around my bed. I got, the shipping tape was covered in this strange material. And I'm like, wow. So I turned the fans off, I turned the air conditioner off. I, I laid down more tape, all the old stuff away. And two hours later, this stuff's like stuck in the tape again. It's under the tape, it's over the tape. I'm like, you know, I don't, I'm not seeing this stuff move. But I do leave the room to use the restroom or whatever, and when I come back in, this stuff's in the tape. I go, this stuff's moving because the tape's not moving. The tape's taped to the ground, taped to the wall. This stuff was stuck in the tape. This weird material stuff. So I go, it ain't the bed bugs biting me. It must be this weird material stuff. You know, that's, you know something, something was pinching me at night when I was sleeping. So I remember the condos, and I, there was just some weird people in there, weird activity, other stuff I haven't even mentioned. So I, I, I put my video camera on, 
I, I meant, I'm making a video, and I go, there's this really weird material in my apartment, and I believe it was put in here by the government, and I believe it's coming from those condos right there, the people are in those condos right there. Two minutes later, a minute later, I'm uploading the video now, a minute later, the video's processing, right? Six huge guys in suits, like seven feet tall. And, 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 and let me just say, in these condos, I've never seen anyone in suits. Six huge guys in suits come running out to this platform that's right here, visible at my door. It's a platform where the gate, security gate is at, the, the call box. They come running out to the platform. They're like in a circle huddled, and they're like panicking, they're sweating, they're pulling over my place. They're, they're like terrified. And now I'm terrified because I, here I am saying this weird material is in here. They're the ones putting it in here. And they're coming out and they're confirming it. So now I know hybrids are real. Reptilian hybrids are real because they're trying to kill me. There's weird material in my apartment. And these people are panicking in the condos. That tells me, wow, I'm on to something, okay? I go to a friend's house. I stay the night. Oh, hang on. Hang on. My video freezes. That's the first thing that happens. My video freezes. Never happened before. I can't upload anything. Now, I go downstairs to my, and tell my brother, because I'm afraid they're going to come over here and, and shoot me, and then put illegal stuff in my apartment and say I was under investigation, and I try to fight them so they had to kill me. That, that's what I was worried about. I'm not going to resist arrest. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm in great health, and I don't plan to vanish anywhere. I go down and tell my brother, because my aunt is my landlord. She ha owns my studio apartment. She owns the house in front. She lives in the house in front. My older brother, you know, is staying with her. I go down there to tell him. He goes, let me check your channel out. He goes on his laptop. Yeah, your channel's frozen. My aunt comes home. She's like, what are you doing? Take that stuff down. You know, so I, I take the videos down with the guys on the platform. Because I don't want my aunt to kick me out, you know. So he's my landlord, so. I, I go to my friend's house for two nights. I come back, and the guy across the street, he's always dressed in a suit, he hangs out with the people in the condos, right? Well, the guy across the street, he has like 12 cop cars at his house. They're there for like six, seven hours. And when, when they leave, that guy never shows up ever again. He's also friends with the lady next door, who's across the street from my house. And he's also friends with the people in the condos. Well, he's gone. The lady across the street in the house, she's still there, but he's gone. I make a video. I say, get this stuff out of my place. Or I'm going to go around and, and, and find out what this stuff is. I'm going to go you know, to different universities, different science places. Within a week, that stuff is gone. It's just gone. It's gone, it's gone now. It was like all over the place. I would sweep, and then I, five minutes later, it was on the, all over the floor. I would sweep, five minutes later, all over the floor. <clears throat> so now I know I'm being gang stalked, or at least I'm being, being stalked. Now I know they're in the condos, and they're across the street. Now I know there's weird material in my apartment, but it's gone now, but it's weird material in my apartment. Now I know there's reptilian hybrids. So, I'm being protected by God, and the Holy Spirit leads me into more investigations, you know, on YouTube. So, I find some scientists and some stuff they say, and it turns out, I find out something really dark about what they're doing to everyone in America, what they're spraying us with. Really nasty stuff. So, I start making videos. You know, I'm excited. I want to save the world. Black helicopter flies over my apartment, you know, trying to intimidate me. On a drive, I got people on my ass one day. They're like all on my back bumper. Guys in trucks, cars, they keep, they keep switching, you know. Like, one will leave, one come up on my ass. And that's not normal for me, but I get close to my home. This guy's supposed to make a left turn. There's no one coming. He doesn't make a left turn, but there's like three, four cars behind him. I'm like the fifth car behind him. And they're like, why isn't this guy turning? There's no one coming. Why doesn't he just turn? 
he looks he looks at me in his side mirror and he goes I'm like wow so I look at him and I go like bam bam you know, with my finger and he goes oh and he like flips me off he goes like oh like that he's like telling me I'm talking too much because I'm making these videos about what you're spraying everybody with right he's blocking traffic and he's like doing this in his mirror to me then this minivan pulls up in the red zone by the bus stop this mafia looking guy gets out of his van walks right into all this traffic and stuff because this guy's blocking traffic this Italian guy walks right up to my bumper of my car the front bumper of my, the front bumper of my car he starts directing traffic don't worry about it let them talk go around go around he starts having people go around this guy who's blocking, blocking us. But he's blocking me where I can't move. He's like in front of my car. So they're like starting to go around and now they're like listening to this guy's orders, all the cars. But he's blocking me where I can't move. Like let these guys talk, you know. So they were threatening me, saying that I'm talking too much. So now I go tell someone about how you can see the stuff that they're spraying everybody with. I come back. I'm walking up my steps, and there's these two creepy marine guys in these condos st 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 standing on the platform, talking to some dude. And they're like, they're like, and they'll go right at me, and they go, they go and then and they, they both take off. I'm like, that doesn't look good. I, I, the day goes on, I forget about it. I, I make dinner, I have a nice huge dinner. I'm watching this uh, dance video I did where I'm with Michael Jackson practicing and stuff, you know, his moves and stuff. And I'm getting ready to go to bed. It's like 1 in the morning. I'm about to turn the lights off. I'm going to go pee and go to bed. My brother was staying the night. And I notice a shadow like walking down my steps. I can see a shadow of a man walking down my steps past the blinds. And I'm watching it, like, you know. I go, okay, he's not disappearing. He's like walking down like three sets of steps, you know. I tell my brother, we have company. So I open up this window right behind me. I tell my brother, we have company. So I open up this window right behind me. There's like a side of my studio apartment. There's like grass, bushes, a chain link fence inside the bushes. And it's about three feet wide. The space is small. On the other side of the huge, huge bushes is my neighbor's yard, her backyard. I can hear someone like creeping around on the side of my studio. I can hear the shoes in the, in the, in the leaves cracking. I call the police. They come out here. They don't want to shine their light. They, they go downstairs. They shine it briefly. And then they sneak off. They don't say goodbye or nothing. They just take off. Oh, that's not right. I call again, the lady hangs up on me. I call a third time. The guy's real nice. He's the guy from the first call. He's real nice. But while the phone's ringing, we're at three in the morning now. There's someone out there like trying to come in, you know, come up here at night. Come up through our window at night, on the side of my place. The third time the phone's ringing, 911, a voice comes on and goes, no one's gonna help you. Like a, like a deep voice. It wasn't a, a demon, they were trying to change their they were changing their voice with a tone box or some kind of a you know of a voice alter or whatever my brother's like whoa what was that he, he thought he thought I was like nuts he goes what was that I said you tell me I'm the nut I'm the crazy one you tell me now he knows there's something going on because the phone to 911 is ringing and this guy's like no one's gonna help you he's like hack it into our phone my phone my phone. Sorry, I get excited when I start telling the story. The guy answers 911. That's the guy from the first call. He's real nice. Okay, and didn't they come out here? I go, they didn't look on the roof. They didn't go in the backyard. They looked on the side of the studio apartment really quick and they took off. The side of the studio goes to the backyard. There could be someone back there. You know? Okay, we'll send them out, whatever. I said, stand the phone with me, please. So I call my aunt downstairs. And my uncle's down there. They wake up. My brother, older brother. Cops get here. There's like five, six of them now. I'm excited because the cops are here. I'm safe. 
I think I'm safe. I go down, and the two cops running the thing, the guy running the, the thing, and his like buddy or whatever, they, they kind of like surround me. And he goes, you're on meth. Go back upstairs and take it. Take your medicine. No drug test, no trial, nothing. I had to beg these officers for 20 minutes to shine their lights behind my studio apartment. Literally get on my knees and beg them. Finally they went back there. They're not those two guys, but four other guys were back there and they shined it, you know. And there was no one back there. But they didn't, they didn't go behind the, the shed. It was like a shed. But then he goes, you call us again, you're going to jail. Now go back upstairs and take your medicine. I was like, wow, no drug test. I can't even call the police if someone's here. Wow. So they leave. I'm up here. It's like 3.34 in the morning. I'm like, the sun's almost up. I should make it. I should be okay now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ride this out. My brother falls asleep. I'm laying on my bed. I'm trying to fall asleep. I hear a, whoa, I open my eyes, my brother opens his eyes, and I, I hear like a, I hear, I hear, that's someone like breathing. And then suddenly you hear a, like a horse sound, like, like, like the, the hooves. And my brother goes, and then it, you know, it faded, and my brother goes, I go, did you hear the guy run away? My brother goes, yeah, but it sounded like a man with like two feet with hooves. Like a man with two feet, like a goat, like a goat man. But, and it didn't sound—it didn't sound like a horse. It sounded a little different than a horse. I'll give him that. But it—it it sounded like a man with hooves on his feet. But right before that, I could hear a regular man running down the driveway. He was running out of the yard. It turns out he was in our neighbor's backyard. And there's a fence right there, a, a, a gate. And he, he, he bolted out. He had to run through our driveway to get out, though, because that's the only way out from that fence opens up. And they covered it up with some kind of a, you know, a, a sound a sound thing, you know? So we wouldn't really hear the guy get away, but they were a little bit late. So we hear, you know, someone running with hooves. This is what happened. My brother heard the 911 call, and he heard someone running with hooves. I, we both heard the boom sound, right? After the boom, it was with uh, two seconds maybe. You hear, that was it. It was just quick. Well, that confirmed to me that somebody was out there. The cops were in on it because they didn't want to shine their flashlights. I had to beg them. I mean, they're paid to protect and serve. They tell us we can't do this, we can't do that, or we're going to jail. Then when you call them for help, they don't want to do their job because they're in on it. The cops were in on it. I'm going to get their names. So this is what happened, okay? This was back in, I think, February. Was it February? February February or March 2017 now. So now I know the Chilean hybrids are real. I'm being gang stalked. The cops were in on it. There's weird material. That's in my place that's removed. But now that I know they have weird material, they probably do this to other people. And now I know that they're spraying everybody with some nasty shit and how you can see it. And that's why they're coming to kill me because they don't want me to tell nobody. This is what, this is reality. This is what's going on in my life. This is reality. I'm coming after them for gang stalking. I can't never tell the secret. It's a promise I made to God. Unless they hurt someone in my family, a friend, or me. I have friends that know what's going on. A security net. So if any one of us gets hurt, the info gets out to the public. Don't try to come here and kill me and think, you know, I'll kill them instead, then we'll find out if reptilians are real. It ain't going to work that way. If, if you kill me, it won't get out. Because God is behind all this. God, God is on my side. He's been protecting me, giving me information as collateral. And the reason... He, Everyone's getting sprayed, and God's not doing nothing. Is because America turned their back on God. We turned our back on God. We don't want Him in our life. He's like, "Oh, I'll leave you alone," and He leaves, and then He takes away His protection with Him. This is what's going on. This is reality. 
I'm in San Diego, North Park. This is reality. Now, those two guys failed. There's two of them, because it was those two Marine guys that's all in the day. One was in the shed, and one was in the neighbor's backyard. I can't prove that, but I can prove there was at least one someone out there. Because someone, when the cops left, an hour later, somebody bolted out of the yard. Somebody on the 911 call said, no one's going to help you. I'm going to get someone to track that hacker. Because somebody hacked into my phone. Even if we can't track them because they covered it up, it'll leave a fingerprint still. See what I'm saying? Then I can sue the police. I can't prove they're involved. They are. I can't prove it. But I can sue them for not protecting me. Who would hack in, who would hack in my phone? They're going to probably blame me for it. Oh, you're hacking your own phone. So you can sue us for I See how they play it? I can see it now. That's what happened. Now, those two guys left, and I know it was two. Then they tried to poison me. They tried other things. That's a long story, but the lady I work for is involved in this. Which I don't work for her no more, but she was involved somehow. They tried to poison me. Someone else tried to poison me. They tried other things. They failed. Because God's protecting me. I'll put it this way. God has showed me that reptilian hybrids are real. I've been gang stalked all my life. The hybrids did not enter my life until 95, 1995, when I got with Elizabeth. That's when the hybrids entered my life. And she was a hybrid, a reptilian hybrid. That's when that whole thing got switched around from regular people to the hybrids. That's what I believe that part. It could have been hybrids the whole time, but. I know hybrids are real. I know I'm being gang stalked. I know the police are, are in on it. I know they're spraying everybody with some nasty shit. And I know how you can see reptilian hybrids now. There's a there's a way to see them. This is all that was revealed to me. And by God, but by them too, because they confirmed it. Because when I thought I uploaded the video, they came to kill me. That confirmed it. I saw the strange material and I made a video about it. They froze my channel and they came out to the platform and panicked. That confirmed it, that they were in the, in the condos right there. When I look at all the pieces of the puzzle in my past, it confirms I've been gang stalked all my life. When I found they're spraying everybody and they come in and try and kill me through my, my window, it confirms that's real. And then I know how to see them. That was, that was a confirmation from my own eyes. There's a way you can see them. Now this is what's going on in America. Now the two secrets I got, the two big secrets that they're spraying us, and there's a way to see them, those two things are sealed. But that's up to God. That's all. Be that's between God. He knows what he's doing. That's between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They, they do what they do because... People push him that way. If people between God, he knows what he's doing. That's between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They, they do what they do because people push him that way. If people are going to reject God, they can't cry when the devil attacks them. That's just what's happening. This is reality. This is my life. This is what's going on in my life. This is the life I'm living. They took my car. They stole my car. I'm, I'm going to sue them. I was in a freeway accident. And uh, I, I hit nobody. I got hit. And um, they're... they're uh, the, the two guys that were racing each other that caused the, the, the four-car pileup thing. Supposedly they got away. But they're not even in the police report. Only one car's in the police report that got away. There was two people racing. So the cops are obviously in on this. They're covering it up. Why would they put only one person was racing when there was two? This is what's going on in my life. I didn't even mention the dentist was purposely hurting me. And I, there's a lot of stuff going on. But the doctor tried to kill me. The dentist was trying to torture my, me with pain. They were trying to sneak in my window and kill me. I'm being gang stalked by these people in these condos next door. This is what's going on in my life. You understand? I'm not going to commit suicide. So if that ever happens anytime in the future, that, that's just not me. 
I don't do that. I'll take a drug test right now. I'm not on meth. I won't be on meth tomorrow unless they put that shit in my body. Unless they plant it in my body. And then kill me and make it look like I'm on meth and I commit a suicide. If that happens, they did it. I'm not going to do meth. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm not going to disappear. I'm not going to break no laws. I'm not doing anything like that. Nothing that's going to endanger me. I plan, I mean, it might not happen, but I, I plan to have all you people out there that are victims help me, support me. And you support me, you help me, and I promise you, I'll bring these motherfuckers to justice. You got my word. You got my word on that. You help me, I'm going to be putting flyers up, I'm, I'm going out to the public. Two secrets stay a secret unless I got to keep my word. I made a promise to God. I won't break that promise for anything unless they violate me. If someone dies in my family, a close friend dies, disappears, anything like anything, I have the green light by God to let all the info get out, the two big secrets get out. That's that's a promise by God. If if they don't, I can still get them for gang stalking. There's all this open territory now. And the collateral was the two secrets I got. I'm coming after them, and those two secrets stay a secret unless they get in my way. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not telling them that they have to give me what I want, but I'm saying that if they try to hurt anybody, my good friends, my family, me, that's what I'm saying. Now, we can stop the gang stalking thing. If you guys can help me. We can work together. I can help you. We're going to stop them. We are not going to say maybe. We are going to stop them. And, and anyone that we can get a hold of that doesn't flee the country, we're going to put them in prison. We're going to do it. Okay, say it with me. We are going to do it. It's going to happen. We're going to wake the public up. Alex Jones, I, I you know, InfoWars, he's not saying arrest them. Arrest them. I want them arrested. They have to be arrested. We, we got to be strong about this. We got to be serious about this and we have to make sure it happens. The criminals have got to be arrested. That's what's, you know, I, I got three views, no money, no one listens, but that's what makes me different. Is I'm not about talk. I'm about action. It, to me, it, it has to happen. We got to get these people back. Justice for what they did to me, what they did to you, other people out there that we don't know about, they have to pay for their crimes. The people next door, I don't care if they never killed anybody. We'll never know if they did or they didn't, because what they're doing is they're looking inside my home. They're looking inside other people's homes in the area. They got to go away for life. We have to assume they did it, because these are like the worst of the worst. These are the worst of the worst. The worst of the worst. We have to get rid of them, legally. But we have to get rid of them. And we have to get rid of congressmen that are involved in this stuff. Policemen involved in this stuff. This is a legal activity on American soil. This is treason. This is treason against the American people. They are the terrorists. They are the terrorists. You hear me? They're the real terrorists. So if you work with me, I need views. I need ears. Because if this information ever gets ready to come out, it ain't going to come out if I got 12, <laughs> 12 people watching me. You understand what I'm saying? I need millions. I, I'm about to, I'm going to take them down. You understand me? I need help though. Legally. Legally, I'm going to get rid of these people. I'm going to expose them too. They're going to be, people are going to know what they're doing. They're going to see their faces and they're going to go to prison. But I need your help. That's, that's where you come in. Share this video, give me some subscribers, and when I put my short film out about gang stalking, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint this town with flyers. I'm gonna go door to door and talk to people. I'm gonna get I'm gonna expose these. And they want to. There's a few of them that want to hang on and live there still. So I, you know, they they want to go down with the ship. Okay, then you go down with the ship. You don't want to move away. You have orders orders to stay. Well, then 
bye bye. When, when they start sinking in the water, I'm going to say, okay, bye bye. You want to go down with the ship so bad? Well, okay, there you go. Because they, they're hanging, there's a few that haven't moved. There's a, a lot of them moved away. There's, a, there's a, a few that are hanging on in there. The bald guy's the technician. I know he's the technician. They're, 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 they want to go down with the ship. They're going to go down because this, this is how it's going to be now. I'm, I'm coming for them legally. I'm not going to back off this. It's going to happen. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to keep you posted. And, you know, God willing, if I get enough viewers, maybe God's just seeing what happens. If I get a big enough audience, God might say, go ahead. And then I'll say, this is how you see reptilian hybrids, and this is what they're doing to you. Now, but you got to remember, Jesus Christ is the one who guided me to this information. So you have to accept all of it. Understand me? All of it. That Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is God. That's awesome. If you knew what I knew, you'd be walking on the clouds. It's awesome news. You're not alone. If you're a victim of gang stalking, I'm going to get a website going where all, we could all like get a petition going. We're going to stick together. We'll, we'll, we'll stay spread out. We can stay anonymous too, so you know if you're afraid. But we stick together still. We we set up a system where they can't infiltrate it, where they can't harm us all at one time. Yet we're still a powerful voice. Do you hear what I'm saying? Where we can take these fuckers down. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry I cussed. We gotta get them though, legally. But we gotta get them. Thanks for watching. And I hope you find Jesus. That's the most important thing. Because none of this is going to matter. This is going to pass. But Jesus Christ loves you. And he's holy. And you, you understand. The devil would love to keep you away from that. Because then you're going to perish.